screen. Oh, hello Milton Hall and welcome to today's topic. Hi kids at home, I can see Finley, I can see Harley, everyone give a wave. Lovely to see you. Well, I have got one of my same guests, I have got Mr Jensen is returning for another week. Good morning, um, good morning. Super exciting, we have got Mrs Hortler. <laughs> so, I can't wait to get started on today's topics. Mr. Baker, can we have our first question? Hi, hi, Spencer. I hope you're well. Hello. Your, your next mm. is having, having your phone on your TV or having your TV on your phone. Hmm. A world without TVs and phones. Let's go with our new guest first. Mrs. Hortler, what do you think about a world without TVs or phones? For me personally, that sounds absolutely blissful. <laughs> no phone calls, no rubbish television. I could actually just, I would love that. That sounds like my ideal world. But, Mrs. <laughs> Hortler, You've got lots of family from other countries. How would you keep in contact with them without a phone? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't think about that. Write letters. I love getting letters. Mm. I love writing letters. I think that's not something we don't do enough. The art of letter writing, I think, perhaps is, is yes. a being a lost so, art. Yeah. What do you think, Mr. Jensen? Oh, well, when I first moved here, I didn't actually have a TV. So I was living without one for a while, kind of got used to it. I, um, I guess we had the laptop though, so you could always stream things online. So I guess that's yeah, the same. I, and like a laptop is definitely a little bit yeah, similar. To I a couldn't TV. imagine though, a world without a TV or a phone. It's hard to think about, but it does sound interesting. A little bit exciting, so yeah. Yeah, maybe we would all like go out and enjoy the the fresh air and the real world a little more. We would talk to each other more. Yeah, mm. more quality time, I think. Yeah, definitely. So. I think that answers that question. Mr. Baker, what is our next question? Hi, Miss Baker, so I hope you're okay. I would like your next topic to be books or films. Hmm. Books versus films. Well, I do like both. Um, I definitely like curling up with a really good book, getting lost in the story, and often the books definitely have more more of the story than a film does. What do you think, Mr. Jensen? Well, uh, I've been really getting into my books since the lockdown started, picking up some of my favourite ones again. So, oh, it's hard, really tricky one again. These these topics are always so so good, but I'd have to say books at mm. the moment. I'm really mm. into the books. Mm. So, mm. and you're right. There's more detail. The stories are richer, fuller, and your imagination can just run wild. So I'm going to have to say books on this one, I think. What do you think, Mrs. Hortler? I'm going to have to say books as well. I. The worst thing is when you read a book and then you see the film, mm. and, it just, oh. and it's nothing like. It's a disappointment to write. Someone right. else's <laughs> story mm. come to life, and yeah, I, I have to definitely say books. I think books really can help, like spark our imagination mm. and help us with our learning. I love films. Don't get me wrong. Yep, I do like to see yeah. them. But I like the fact that you can make up your own world yeah. from the book mm. without actually having to. Actually, what well, sometimes is nice is if you watch the film and then go back and read the book afterwards yes. and you find out all these extra details yeah, the that you here. didn't know yeah, yes, yes. beforehand. Okay. Good point. Good point. Following on, Mr. Baker, what is our next question? Hi, Miss Megerson. I like Disney films. Ooh. What do you like? Leading into. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Miss Megerson. Okay, so what is our favourite kind of film genre? What do you think, Mr. Jensen? Uh, well, leading on from the books versus films, if I had to pick my favourite film types, I'd have to go with maybe a fantasy, sci-fi mm. kind of series. I've just recently watched all the Harry Potter films again. What a great series of films that was. The Lord of the Rings series, my absolute favourite. The Hobbit, all great series. Star Wars, they usually series of films I think because then you get more of a story so it's gonna have to be fantasy sci-fi all those kind yeah. of those type of films they're my favorite you've yeah. definitely taken the words out of my own mouth oh, did I? <laughs> I love a sci-fi or fantasy sort nice. of seeing things that aren't 
magical. Normally seeing our real life and really being transported to that fantastical world. What do you think, Mrs. Hortler? Um, I personally love horrors. <laughs> Absolutely love horrors. I haven't like seen a really good horror for a long, long time, but Ooh. I just love those scary films. Bit of a Curling thrill, up in the dark, seeker. especially if you're on your own. Um, you're much braver than me. I could not watch them. The scarier the better. I don't like gory films, just mm. really scary. Mm. So what? thrilling. Yeah. A lot of chase on and the, suspense. On the edge of your seat, kind of, and then things that pop out at you and can be frightening. <laughs> cool. Okay, Miss Baker, what is our next question? Holidays abroad or the UK? Ooh. Ooh. Ah, oh, holidays abroad in the UK. Well, I mean, it's quite debatable at the moment given the current situation, but what do you think? Let's go to Miss Hortler first. What do you think? Holidays abroad or in the UK? Uh, it, it doesn't really make any difference for me because everything's abroad for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And actually, it's all true for the yeah, as well. So, um, I, d I do love going abroad, but I, d I equally like going and seeing things in the UK. Mm. I mean, there's so many amazing countries. Yeah, there's so much history. The UK. All the forests, yeah. beautiful beaches. Absolutely. So um, I don't know if I have a preference, really. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, um, if I had to choose abroad or the UK, I would probably go for the UK because mm. some of my favourite places have been yeah. Scotland, mm, Wales, so beautiful. and Northern Ireland, which are all part of the UK. Oh, England's great as well. Ireland Cornwall, yet, so. Cornwall down the south is mm. very nice, but some of my favourite places have been in in the UK. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go. Mm. Travel in the UK has been my favourite. And so I, I would recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I would probably also say the UK, but that's because I don't really like it when it's very hot. <laughs> if it's like super, super hot, I just go uh, and melt and die. Although one Pretty day... Pretty safe here then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day I really want to go to Japan. I've always loved the culture. Japan's it's lovely. beautiful. There's mountains, there's forests, there's so much culture and that's somewhere that I'd really food. like to go. Yeah, amazing one food. Day. I loved Japan. Did you? Mm. Yeah. So jealous. Well, we could talk. We could talk for hours about travelling. Yeah, well, yeah. well, and actually, speaking of talking forever about travelling, Mr. Baker, what is our next question? Which is apparently about travelling. What is it? Yeah. Is it in order? Hi, Miss Megerson. Your <laughs> next topic is travelling. Uh, it was almost like the sequence of these questions were planned. <laughs> so. Travelling around. Well, we've both got two world travellers here on today's topic. Mr. Jensen, I know you and Mrs. Jensen really like to go and visit places. What are some of those favourite places that you've oh, seen? Oh, wow. Put me on the spot. There's so many places. <laughs> well, I just talked about the UK. Um, yeah. If I had to go abroad, I'd say one of my favourite places was Canada. <gasps> we also uh, really did really I just Canada. steal that from you, Mrs. Hortley? Uh, I think well, I might I was going to mention Canada because the weird thing was you would never guess who we ran into in the big country that is Canada. Yep. We, we pulled up <laughs> to a service station to get gas, oh. and there were the Jensen's. <laughs> you couldn't, you, yeah, you yeah, couldn't you imagine couldn't how much, how far away we were from Milton Hall. Yeah. We did not plan it, but somehow we ran into Mr. and Mrs. Hortler. <laughs> Shows how small the world really yeah. is. And Mrs. Jensen and myself, we also ran into Miss, uh, Mrs. Moss. Yes. In another part of Canada as well, just after seeing Mr. and Mrs. Hortler, so it was, it was we crazy. We have been in the same place, but didn't run yeah. there. But. Amazing. Like, definitely Canada. Yeah, number Amazing. one. Amazing. So, you never know, even if you go to a different country, who you will see while you are there. So, Mr. Baker, what is your next question? Hi, Mr. Baker, so, you're okay, your next topic is mass or English. Maths versus English, the great debate. <laughs> well, when I was in primary school, I loved maths. It was my favourite subject at the time. And when I was in year six, I won the maths prize. But definitely, as a teacher, I love teaching English. I love like living inside those stories and seeing all the wacky ideas that the children create when they get to write their own stories. I know when Finley was in year two, he wrote some of my favourite stories that I've ever had one of my children written. I can see him smiling now. But Finley, Finley Cotter, great, great imagination. One day I want to see a book from you. What about you, Mr Jensen? What do you think? Oh, that's another, no, another great question. I'm going to say I'm leaning towards English mm, because I mm. teach reception in year one. Often it's a uh, 
the joys of teaching young children how to read. Mm. So that's my it's favorite so thing important. to do. Watching them grow as a reader and get excited about reading. I can see Tom at home <laughs> there, who's one of the superstar <laughs> readers from my class. He oh. was doing fantastically on Accelerated Reader. And I'm sure he's probably Super. reading lots at home. So English, yes, my favourite. Great. Super. Hey, and because we know that <laughs> books can really open up a whole world of learning. So English is really mm. important. What do you think, Miss Ortler? What's your favourite to teach? Uh, I love teaching maths. <laughs> Yeah. Maths is definitely my favourite subject to teach. That uh, was my favourite subject at school. Mm. Um, I can see how she's in my maths group. Um, oh, she is. Yeah. Yeah. I l absolutely mm. love challenging everybody and, and having that little almost moment where they go, oh, mm. I get it now. Oh, that's why it is. It's, yeah, I love maths. And I love in maths that you can solve a problem in lots of different ways. Yeah. I really like, like it's a big brain teaser. It makes you really, really think about yeah. it. Yeah. What I like is that maths is. is there's only one answer, but there's so many different yes. ways that you sort of just trying to work it out. And mm -hmm. people have True. got different ways of thinking of things, so that's what I like about it. Yeah, and that's really interesting when we listen to other people's yeah. thinking. So, Mr. Baker, what is our next question? <laughs> What's Oliver doing? <laughs> His wiggly eyebrows. Hi, Miss Megason. Your next topic is fruits or vegetables. Which is your favourite? <laughs> Fruit? <laughs> Fruit or vegetables? What is our favourite? Wow, really tricky. Both healthy. Interesting. Mm. What do you think, Mr. J? Oh, I don't know. Uh, why are these so difficult? Um, fruit or veg? I love oh, Sunday night roast. Mm. Mm. The vegetables are probably my favourite part of the meal. You know, I can leave mm. the roast pork or roast chicken or whatever it is, but really the roast vegetables, crispy, crunchy, salty. Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to yeah. say vegetables on this one. Roast vegetables. What do you think, Miss Wartler? Um, I think fruit is definitely one of my favourite things to eat as a snack yeah. or just whenever. I could have an entire meal of just fruit. Um, and there's so many different types of fruit that you can get. Um, and if you're like craving that sweet fix and you don't want to have like a biscuit or a cake and want to go for something healthy, you can get just as much sugar out of a delicious piece of fruit. Exactly, and I, there's a couple of um, supermarkets I've just tried recently that have got fruits that I haven't seen since I was a child and they, oh. grow, they only grow in New Zealand. They, you can't grow them in this country. Oh, really? And it was really, I saw them and thought, oh, I can finally get them here. So, and that was really lovely. So I keep going back to that mm. same um, supermarket to get the yeah. fruits that I'm used to having in New Zealand, which is really nice. So I'm definitely mm. a fruit person. I probably have to say I love vegetables the most. Um, in the lockdown, we've been trying to grow lots of vegetables in our garden partially something to do and also you know to have some lots of lovely fruits like lots of lovely vegetables and I've really enjoyed seeing them grow picking them in the garden and then eating them straight away it's been really really Nothing fun yeah. Mr Baker what is our next question hello Mrs Megerson uh, your next topic is glamping or camping Glamping or camping? Maybe for our um, viewers at home. So glamping is camping, um, I guess, but just very, very fancy camping. So maybe you'd have like a real bed Glamorous and a big camping. tent and a bit more like a, like a home inside a tent rather than a tent tent. What do you think, Mr. J? Uh, well, I've had experience of both. Yeah. As a child, my family often went camping a lot. I didn't really enjoy it much. You know, the bugs. Well, this is Australia I'm talking about. There's more <laughs> dangerous animals and bugs and things that can hurt you over there, so there's more to be scared of. Uh, but here, uh, Mrs. Jensen and I, we tried a bit of glamping, with yep. that glamorous camping, and I much preferred that um, because mm. I'm not very good at camping. I even had to uh, Google how to make a fire because uh, I couldn't get the fire started. <laughs> I was having trouble. Uh, you know, I'm a bit glamorous myself, really, so um, <laughs> glamping all the way. <laughs> what do you think, Mrs. Ortler? Um, I don't really mind either way. I love camping and yeah. I've always camped as a child. We always went camping and when I was little there was no such thing as glamping. Yeah, the same. <laughs> um, but now that I take my family, when we go camping, um, we do have a big tent. I, I do say I have to have a duvet and a yep. proper bed. Um, and we have yeah. electricity with a fridge and oh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> and Wi-Fi. I have to say, I took an, an oven once and we had a roast chicken. Um, oh, this is, okay, so in what my head glamping was, like you've definitely taken it to the next yeah, level. It was, the, next, it was the extreme, yes. We actually had a roast chicken when we went camping. <laughs> 
was lovely. I have definitely done both. When I was uh, when I was in secondary, we did. There's a thing in the UK called the Duke of Edinburgh's Award, which is something that you might you do it to it. sort oh, of cool. put on your UCAS form when you want to go to university. Which um, basically is you and some other uh, children walking through the Lake District or the Peak District, carrying very heavy old tiny tents. Um, cool. And then sort of having to like crawl inside and you can't stand up inside the tent and you're on this roll mat and it's cold and it's hard. And it really put me off camping for a really long time <laughs> until I knew some friends who did it more as adults and they were like, oh, Mrs. Mega said, you can have a tent that you can stand up in. Did you know that there are air mattresses? <laughs> Would you like some chairs? And I was like, wow, this, this is how to camp. Much, I really yeah. enjoy being outside in the fresh air and all of that, but I also like a real bed and a tent I can stand up in. So maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> I have to say the lack of buggy things in this country is, is much nicer to camp in mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, true. The lack of flying bitey bugs yeah. um, is nicer in this country, definitely. And no snakes, they're going to get you no a tent. No snakes, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I could uh, hack Australia or <laughs> New rough. Zealand, actually. Way too rough. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr Baker, what is our next question? Oh, thanks for your question, Olivia. So, paper versus tech. I think there's definitely an argument for both. One's probably more environmentally sound. What do you think, Mrs. Hortler? Um, I would definitely say tech, I think, only because at the moment I'm doing, um, finishing a degree, mm. and it's all online. Mm. And, um, it's much easier to have everything, to type everything out. If I had to write my three and a half thousand word essay and I had to write it, <laughs> I think I would have died. Yeah. But yeah, so tech definitely, because it's all there, I can't lose it. Mm. Um, and if, it, you know, if you type something, you can edit it yeah, afterwards, exactly. you can cut and paste, you can do a lot of things. And I don't have to rewrite the whole thing again. Yeah, from if scratch. I make a mistake at word 2999. <laughs> 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 what do you think, Mr. Jensen? Oh, um, it's an interesting one, this. I think. I do, I do wonder if we are heading towards a paperless mm. kind of society, in a, way, in a way you think, think about that sometimes, technology's not constantly advancing, mm. um, but I don't know, it's something about paper and writing on, mm. and like letters, like we were saying before, yeah. sending and receiving letters that and really... books, I think, as I well. Was, mm. I had that in I my head, I was book like, that's yeah. books book. versus Kindles. Yeah. I know when I was uh, teaching in London that I used a Kindle a lot mm. because I was having to commute on the tube where there was often no seats. So standing, holding a Kindle was a lot easier than yes. holding a really heavy book. But the there is something about the smell of a new Yep, book. the yeah. feel, the smell. So I, I'd have to be leaning towards paper more. Like I couldn't no, see no, that disappearing. Yeah. I'd be maybe sad the, if there were no more books. Good, <laughs> but maybe they're for different purposes True. and different times. Yeah. Both have their merits. Mr. Baker, what is our next question? I was on a beach now. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Magnuson. Your next topic is parks or beaches? <laughs> well, thinking back to my comment about not liking when it's too hot, I would definitely be, I'm definitely a park person. <laughs> what are you, Mrs. Hortler? I'm definitely a beach person. Oh, I can um, imagine I it. grew up with the beach right on my doorstep. Mm. So um, I swam in the sea from a before I could even walk, I think. So I'm definitely a beach person. <laughs> I, I'm not 100% sure about the beaches in this country. I haven't found one yet, which I've been really blown away by, though. Oh, Miss Haller, have you ever been to North Norfolk? I, I had, no, I haven't been to North Norfolk, actually. I've been to a beach in Norfolk. If it's, if it's it lower down, not so nice towards Suffolk, but that the, the top part of the oh, wash, okay. there, are, there are seals, they're beautiful, like beaches white and formal, sand, liked, really, really beaches, clean. Yeah. Okay, well, I might really have to nice. join it there. I'll we're take you one time. We're going to Norfolk in um, the holidays. So. Oh, are you? Yes. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Perfect. Jensen? Uh, I'm the same. I was born in Australia on a coastal town, so, mm. and my dad had a boat. We would go out in the boat fishing. He would go diving. Uh, so we would go to islands just off the coast, and we'd sit on the beach all day while dad was off fishing, you know, playing in the water. So I do love the beach, but the parks in this country are great. Yeah, that's also the parks yeah. in this country are awesome. And it's nice not to get 
third degree burns yes. on your skin <laughs> when you go out for maybe a half an hour in the park here. It's lovely. You can spend maybe spend the day without getting burnt to a yeah. crisp. So <laughs> I do enjoy or the park. Having to be yeah. dressed from yeah, yeah just yeah completely. You're getting sand in your sandwiches. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I kind of like the sand everywhere. <laughs> I do miss that. <laughs> okay, Miss Baker, what is our next question? Hi, Miss Megson. Your next topic is PE or drama? PE or drama? drama. Well, Miss Jensen, what um, was your favourite? My favourite would have to be PE because. I love doing it with year one. That's my favorite activity. Every week we would be out there, no matter what the weather, we'd be out there <laughs> doing PE. Uh, and I get to do it with each class. So I love doing PE. Uh, I can see some, some PE superstars at home there. Noah and Tom, they were really good at PE, really good at all the games we used to play. But um, I have to say, Mr. Buxton and his drama lessons are amazing. So I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't decide. Maybe the children at home will have to have a vote. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could do a vote. Mm. I don't think any of the children who've ever been in my class would ever not know that drama is absolutely one of my favourite subjects. I loved doing drama either on my own or with Mr Buxton. Always, always super fun to explore those stories. What about you, Mrs Haller? Uh, I'd probably have to say that definitely drama. Um, so much so it, that Mr Buxton and I actually teach drama outside of the school together. So, oh, uh, totally. yeah. So um, it would definitely be drama. I, I like PE and I liked it at school, sort of, but I definitely <laughs> preferred drama at school and I definitely <laughs> prefer teaching drama. Well, I think we've had a fantastic discussion today and we are now, unfortunately, on to our last question. So, Mr. Baker, let us have our last question, please. Hi, Miss Megson. I hope you're all right. The next topic is what, what subject do you like? I mean, such a tricky question to ask a group of teachers. I love teaching all of the different mm. subjects. Every subject that we teach has something a little bit special about it. We've already talked about how much I love English. But I have to say that history is one of my favourite subjects to teach. I loved history at the school uh, when I was at school. Learning about the Egyptians and how they uh, mummified people and put their organs in jars or... Henry VIII cutting off all his wives' heads. <laughs> um, I just think you like so the gory parts of the history. <laughs> well, you know, a horrible history. Makes it, it sounds like it. Yeah, definitely makes it more interesting. But I also think that there's really important lessons that we can learn from history that we need to take forward to today. So, Miss Hortler, what is your favourite subject to teach? Well, without fail, it would be art. Ah, oh, um, yeah. And if you come into my classroom, you will. <laughs> be able to see that quite clearly that art is one of my favourite things to teach because I absolutely mm. love the things that the mm. kids create mm. in my class. Um, I like doing my own art. Um, but I love history as well, so that's mm. another thing. But I then I was trying to aim towards doing more artistic historical things. So yeah. I think it always comes back to art. So. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Mr. Jensen? Um, well, I really enjoyed at school, high school, science. Oh, Biology, love science. chemistry, um, all the sciences. So. Uh, I really enjoy teaching that one as well, so mm. I think science, yeah, has lots of lots of fun to it. I really enjoy doing experiments, yeah. mm. like finding something out that we didn't know before, sort of thinking about that scientific process, Definitely. really, really fun. Definitely a highlight. Well, my lovely guests, unfortunately, it's time for this week's show to end. I have really, really enjoyed our discussion. So, there is goodbye from me. Say goodbye, Miss Hortler. Bye. And by Miss Jensen. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Bye.